In this short video, we're going to look at how to factor more general trinomials. So remember, a trinomial has three terms, and we looked at simple trinomials where the coefficient on the squared term, or the quadratic term, was 1, and now we're going to look at cases where it's not 1. And there's a couple of techniques that can be used. One is just trial and error. And I know that there are many, many different techniques for performing the trial and error. They have some really interesting names like bottoms up or something like that. And whatever, if you understand those methods, well, please use them. You do not have to use what I do here. But I'm going to try to present it just kind of step by step. Uh, and then there's another method. Uh, which is more related to the simple trinomial, trinomial factoring, but you have to do some number games and then factoring by grouping. So you're going to rewrite it as four terms and then use factoring by grouping. So let's take a look at the trial and error. We're going to try to look at 2n squared minus 11n plus 15. The idea is that's going to be the product of two binomials. So the so I'm going to have two terms in each set of parentheses. And the first two terms have to multiply to make 2n squared. And the second two terms have to multiply to make positive 15. So we've got the quadratic term and the uh, constant term. And then we have to do the inside, inner and outer terms. The inner terms plus the outer terms multiply together should give me negative 11n. So that'll make FOIL work. So uh, what do we do? Well, I just say, how can I get 2n squared? I can multiply 2n times n. That's about it. And then how can I get positive 15? Well, uh, I know that since it's it has to add to make a negative number. I'm looking for two negative numbers. So I could have negative 1 times negative 15, negative 3 times negative 5, negative 5 times negative 3, or negative 15 times negative 1. And then I just try them. Now, really you can, uh, you know, based on the sum that you're trying to get, you can say right away that you know, I shouldn't be using any numbers that are larger than negative 11 if they're both going to be negative numbers. So trying negative 1 and negative 15 is not even sensible. It's going to automatically be larger than negative 11 when you add them together. So let's try the next pair, which would be negative 3 and negative 5. So multiplying the outer ones, I get negative 10. And multiplying the inner, I get negative 3. And I want negative 11. Well, that gives me negative 13. So we have to reject that one. So let's try negative 5 and negative 3. The outer gives me what? Uh, negative 6. The inner gives me negative 5. Together, that makes negative 11, which is what I want. And so that is my solution right there. That's my factorization. Like I said, I know. I know students have shown me. I've seen YouTube videos where people have come up with many systematic ways for finding these uh, trial and errors. And if it works for you, go for it. Please, just, you know, uh, make it work. Uh, in fact, um, if you practice these, you can start doing a lot of these trials and errors mentally. So this is one case where you, know, you, you really don't have to show a lot of work because I understand that people can do these trial and errors in their head. All right, so uh, let's do another example here. Um, I am going to try to use trial and error again. This time I have 4y squared. And 4y squared makes things a little bit more complicated. 
um, because the product of 4y squared, uh, in the previous example, there was only one choice. It's 2n times n. But here we're going to have more choices. And so, and also we're going to have more choices to get a product equaling negative 12. Right. So, um, the inner and the outer terms, when we multiply them together, they should add to make positive 13. Why? And uh, the fact that I have a negative 12 will tell me that I'm looking for one positive and one negative. And so that doesn't really help me when you have positives and negatives because you could have subtraction. Uh, but the fact that I've got a 13y might be a hint that I, I need to get something. Uh, I'm going to have more positives than negatives. And it's got to be, uh, at least one of the numbers has got to be bigger than 13 because I'm going to subtract something off. So let's start. How can I get 4y squared? I can take 4y times y, or I can take 2y times y. How can I get negative 12? Well, I could have negative 1 times 12, negative 2 times 6, negative 3 times 4, negative 4 times 3, negative 6 times 2, and negative 12 times 1. And um, you'll we'll see that I could actually also switch the signs, but that will be clear. Uh, just like we saw before. Uh, so I'm going to try starting with 4y and y. Uh, I'm going to try uh, negative 1 and positive 12. And again, you could be doing these uh, trial and error in your head. Uh, but I can see right away this is going to give me a 48y. That's just too, way too large. So I'm going to go on to the next one. Uh, well, I didn't go straight on to the next one because I said I want to get something. Um, I don't want to use the 6. I eliminated that because I know I'd have 6 times 4y, which would give me 24y. That's going to be too big. So I went ahead and skipped to negative 3, 4. And the outer product is 16y, the inner product is negative 3y, and together that makes positive 13y. That's what I want. So here I have found my answer. So let's look at these same examples, but using a different technique. Because for some people, going through all of those trial and errors, very time consuming, uh, or uh, they, they just you know, can't do it mentally. So there's, here's an alternative. You don't have to do it this way. But what we're going to do is rewrite that negative 11n as the sum of two terms, which means that in the end I'll have four terms and I can use grouping. So how do I know what, how to rewrite the negative 11n. Well, I take the product of the constant and the coefficient on the quadratic term. That's 30. So that's got to be the two numbers. I'm looking for two numbers which multiply to make positive 30. Again, that's 2 times 15. And then the sum has to be uh, negative 11. That doesn't change. So if I can find two numbers which multiply to make 30 and add up to negative 11, and those numbers are negative 5 and negative 6. They multiply to make positive 30, and their sum is negative uh, 11. So now I'm going to have four terms. 2n squared minus 5n minus 6n plus 15. I didn't change this. I just wrote it in a different way. But now I have four terms, so I will look at the first two, look at the second two as two separate groups, find a common factor. In the first group, the common factor is n, 
In the second group, it's negative 3. When I factor those out, I get 2n minus 5 as my first binomial. And so the second binomial will, will have n minus 3. And I'm done. Let's do the other example. So here I had 4y squared plus 13y minus 12. So I'm looking for two numbers. I'm going to rewrite the plus 13y as the sum of two terms. To find the coefficients on those terms, I need to find two numbers which multiply to make negative 48. How did I get negative 48? 4 times negative 12. And then the sum has to be positive 13. And so, again, if you can do this in your head, great. If not, we're just going to list numbers that multiply to make negative 48. And then from them, I'm looking for, is the sum of any of these pairs equal to positive 13? And sure enough, uh, negative 3 and positive 16 together make positive 13. So that is how I'm going to split up the 13y. I'll write it as negative 3y plus 16y. Now I have four terms. I'll group them, the first two together and the last two together. The common factor in the first two is just y. The common two factor in the last two is going to be 4. My one binomial then is going to be 4y minus 3. The other one will have a y plus 4. Now, as a challenge example, we saw this back when we were looking at uh, special products factoring. And even though we have a perfect square in the quadratic term and a perfect square in the uh, constant term, this is not the square of a binomial. So let's see if we can factor this. Uh, I'm going to try to factor it by grouping. As I said it may actually be easier to use trial and error, but I wanted to demonstrate the technique that could be used when you're dealing with big numbers. Because the product here would be 25 times 36. I'm not going to multiply that out. That would just give me a headache and a lot of work. And so how can I avoid uh, multiplying that out? Well, actually, I want to use the prime factorization of 25 and 36. So 25 times 36 would be the same as 5 times 5 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2. And so if I can group these factors in different ways, uh, then I can find out which grouping will give me two numbers that, whose sum will be negative 65. Now, on the face of it, it looks like it's a huge task, right? If I actually went ahead and tried to do the grouping just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So I could have negative 5, and then I would put everything else negative 5 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2. And both of them have to be negative because the sum is negative and this is a positive number here. So <clears throat> I could take 1, 5 and then all of the other factors, 1, 3 and all of the other factors, 1, 2 and all of the other factors, and so on, right? I could have two fives and then whatever's left over. And then, you know, when I multiply these out, I would get these numbers and I could check the sum. And so, I mean, that's a lot of checking to do, right? And, but if you're smart about it, you can avoid uh, a large number of it by just thinking about, well, the sum has to be negative 65. It has to end in a 5. And the only way that I can get something that's going to end in a 5 is if one of these factors is an odd multiple of 5. So it has to have, you know, uh, 25, 15, 5, 
you know, something that ends in a five, right? And, um, and in fact, I guess I could have eliminated these, uh, this one and this one as well. Let me go ahead and draw a line through those. So I would not have, for example, this one to even think about or this one. And the other, uh, because I'm going to be adding them together and, um, and uh, the total is going to be 65. Well, if either factor is bigger than 65, when I add them together, it's going to be even bigger than 65, right? So I can reject anything that gives me a num a factor, which, okay, in absolute value, is larger than 65, and any combination which doesn't give me one of the numbers ending in five. And uh, that eliminates a lot. So really, I'm only down to four, and I'm not even four, because it turns out these last two are uh, actually the same numbers, right? Negative 20 and negative 45. So <coughs> if I use a little bit of uh, process of elimination, uh, I can really reduce the trials that I need to do. And uh, I found that the numbers have to be negative 45 and negative 20. So let's go ahead and write out this negative uh, 65 as negative 45x minus 20x. And again, we look at the first two and the last two. Look for a common factor. And the first two is going to be a 5x. And in the last two, it's going to be 4. And so my first binomial will be 5x minus 9. The second binomial will have 5x minus 4. And there's my factorization. So in summary, if we have ax squared plus bx plus c, you can use trial and error. And, and again, if it works for you, go for it. You don't have to show work for, the, for this particular task. If you can do the trials in your head, then that's fantastic. You are in really good shape. Otherwise, or even if you get stuck, sometimes we, you know, you, you're using trial and error, you're, you're doubting yourself, or maybe you have a mental block, you can go back to grouping, right? So you're going to find two numbers which multiply to make the number a times c, so the quadratic coefficient times the constant, and add to make b. That will tell me how to rewrite this as four terms, and then we use factoring by grouping.